everybody. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. It is true crime time. And uh, as promised, you know, something from the the dregs of old Hollywood. It is uh, a person and a subject that is uh, very popular on the site. And uh, to do it with me, as always, is uh, Jen. Jen, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Good, good. Uh, so if you're listening to this on the first day that it's available, it is uh, Reveal Day, July 4th. Happy 4th, everybody. The um, So you could listen to it while you're reading the reveals. And if you're listening to this right at midnight Pacific time, uh, you should get some sleep because they're going to start at 9 o'clock in the morning and they will go until I'm too drunk to type. One of the so, best days ever. Yes, it is. This is uh, when I get to July 4th. I really enjoy it because there's a long gap between New Year's Day and July 4th, and then all of a sudden it's July 4th, and the next thing you know it's Black Friday, and the next thing you know, like six weeks after that, it's January 1st, and it just it seems to come boom, boom, boom. Uh, I, I enjoy the July 4th reveal day because I think it was the first one when I first had the idea to do it, and that was way back in about 2007. Six? No, seven. Oh. So seven, this was your uh, first one. This is like your anniversary. Yes, July 4th. Oh, that's sure. even more special. I love it. It is. And, you know, the thing that's changed over the years with the reveal day is that until, I don't even know when now, maybe oh, three, four years ago, five years ago, I, I only did reveals on reveal day. So it, 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 there, it, it was kind of sometimes they could be a little bit lackluster uh, because I was – I had so many regular kind of ones, but now I get rid of the regular ones throughout the week. So that makes these three other days so much more special. Oh, trust uh, me. He, he's not packing lackluster. He, he's there, got your fireworks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I uh, hope everybody had a chance to listen to the, the Walt Disney one. That was the first part. There's going to be a second part. There's going to be a recap of the reveals. I don't know how long it'll take. I don't know exactly when it'll get posted on Friday. And then I'm almost done with a Scooter Braun episode, which I felt was very timely. So that's going to happen as soon as I can finish that. But now we can talk about true crime. And in true crime fashion, there's a lot of speculation about whether something, you know, what all the ins and the outs. We know that people are dead, uh, as in often the case. We have bodies, so there's no missing bodies. However, uh, it is about screen legend uh, Jean Harlow, who died at a very young age. And over the years, I have had uh, a couple of blind items about her, and I want to kind of go in order. Now, it's interesting because the first one was from 2009, and the second one is from 2017. Now, the 2009 one actually came to me from... Uh, Johnny Grant, the old uh, honorary mayor of Hollywood, uh, when he used to share a lot of stories with me, and this was his. And then the the 2017 one came from uh, actually a, a relative of one of the people involved, and it kind of Gene is not the 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 sole moving part. Of the of the latter one, the relative was of somebody who was uh, was just one of the moving parts. Uh, so it's it's a little bit different in this. It's just it's interesting and it kind of goes into the whole. Okay, well, how did all this happen and what about these deaths and it just it's very interesting. So the first one is from actually way back December thirtieth, two thousand nine, and I had uh, I guess. The day that I wrote it, I talked about some internet problems that I had, so uh, which was not unusual. I think that in December 2009, where was I? Um, it's December 30th. I don't know. I want to say that I was in the middle of nowhere, which was common around that time, <laughs> and did not have internet connection. And honestly, I, I swear to you on everything that I think in 2009 – I was using a dial-up from where I was, a dial-up. No, there was no <laughs> Wi-Fi, no Ethernet, no anything. I believe, I believe it was a dial-up, which is probably why I didn't have an Internet connection. And I wrote this one just to get it under the deadline so I could reveal it in a couple of days because I always liked having old Hollywood ones. I still do. 
And it was kind of a tradition back then, uh, the day before a reveal day or two days before a reveal day, I would do a couple of old Hollywood ones. And then Mr. X and I would get together and he, we would come up with a bunch of blind items for old Hollywood for January 2nd. So it was kind of an old Hollywood day, but it just, you, uh, I don't know. There's, there's only so many blinds from, from the past, you know, it's a lot easier to do current ones, but anyway, that's kind of set it up. And it says this actress was definitely a list back in the day. And by back in the day, I mean, prior to television, she was all movies. Our actors came from a very unstable background with perhaps the queen of stage moms as her mother. Now, Jen, would you agree that she had the queen of stage moms as her mother? Oh, 100%. Yes, she did. <laughs> our, our actress was never nominated for any of the big awards, but starred in a lot of movies. She was in and out of marriages frequently, and one of the ways she got out of one was by killing her husband. Oh, not the husband everybody knows was found dead by a gunshot, which is one of the things that Jen and I are going to talk about today. Nope. He's considered her second husband, but in reality was her third. The second husband was a guy in the mafia who had seen our actress on screen and loved her. He whined her, dined her, and romanced her. Our actress loved it and eloped with him after just a few weeks. And uh, I'm going to stop right there. It's not uncommon for her to to get with somebody and be married to them in a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then be divorced six months after that. That's oh, a, yeah, that's Charles a theme Lewis. for her. Yeah. Uh, well, at the same time this was happening, our actress's career was about to skyrocket because she was moving to a new studio. The new husband wanted her to stay home and be a wife, and our actress and her domineering mother wanted the big career. So one night, our actress and the man who would be her next husband um, killed her husband of two months and buried him in the desert. Now, it's said that the reason her next husband was killed was revenge by the mafia. So um, anyway, the it goes on to say, but I say uh, this was my this was my theory and not Johnny so much. He said, you know, it's possible. He said, you know, it could have been the actress who saw a future which was brighter with a new man in her life. With divorce, not an option, a gun was. I, I, Johnny is convinced that um, that the guy we're going to talk about in a little while is the one who did it. Oh. And, uh, you know, but it goes back a long way. It goes back before Johnny was alive. And, but Johnny had a lot of a lot of people he knew in the mafia. Frank Sinatra was one of his best friends, Dean Martin. And, so he hung around with a lot of mafia guys, a lot of studio guys from the, the 50s and 60s and was out in Vegas all the time. So he would know about mafia stories, but still, mafia people like to tell tales. Uh, so you never know. Then we move up to 2017, and this one is a little bit more complicated. I want to see how I listed them, and I didn't list them very well. So uh, I like when I do A, B, C, D, and then I'll substitute the names, however – I'm going to look at them and at the same time try and fill in the blanks because it is five paragraphs long. Um, but this was September 5th, 2017. And again, uh, I like to, to reveal it on New Year's Day, 2018. And it said plenty of studio heads in old Hollywood basically forced actresses to have sex with them for roles. It wasn't so much a casting couch as it was sexual assault. One of the most famous studio heads is still famous today, many years after his death, and this is Howard Hughes. He's so famous that multiple movies have been made about his life. Funny, though, most of those movies failed to discuss the horrors of working for him or being an actress under contract at his studio. If you didn't agree to have sex with him, he would rape you. If you did agree to have sex with him, then the odds were high you would contract syphilis. There was one actress who told her husband she was a virgin when they married, and that's Loretta Young. She wasn't. The husband figured out figured out when he contracted syphilis from her and divorced her almost immediately after marrying her. There was another actress who was set to marry our executive, but suddenly didn't. Reason? Our executive basically sold her to a very rich man, and that's Rita Hayworth. One of the women he really wanted, but couldn't pressure because of her A plus list fame, got secretly married. This enraged our executive, who had the husband murdered. It was always portrayed as something else, but the executive did the killing. Now, see, this is where the person who had the other information, who is a relative of one of the people involved, said that um, it wasn't Paul Byrne who did it, who we'll talk about in a little while, but that it was Howard Hughes. Now, they said that, you know, it was 
you know, who had the husband murdered. And then they, when I was talking to them, they said, oh, you know, it, it probably was the executive, and that's how they framed it. So it was either Howard Hughes, but he was a billionaire. He could have easily hired somebody uh, to do it. It's just it's interesting whether or not it was Howard Hughes or he hired somebody to do it. Now, this death was always portrayed as something else, um, like I said, but then he had a tour fling with the actress who was afraid she would be killed if she didn't. So it's very important <clears throat> that you know that he had syphilis and that he had um, that he had sex with Jean Harlow. Now, another actress who our executive loved kept putting off the executive by getting married, and this is Ava Gardner. What did the executive do about it? She paid, he paid off the husbands to divorce the actress until she finally gave in and started sleeping with the executive. She also contracted syphilis from the executive and refused to have children for fear of passing it to them through birth. Now, there was an actress who was probably a minus list, and this is Jean Tierney. She's an Academy Award nominee. There was always a, a, a fiction that she never slept with the executive. The story was he pursued, but she declined. No such thing. He pursued, and she slept with him and contracted syphilis. And when she gave birth to a child with severe defects, there was a story concocted as to why. Okay, so that's the, that's the blind. And what it's, it's interesting about all of this is that if you um, think about the circumstances of Gene Harlow's death uh, that we're going to talk about and the studio system, um, you can see that all of this kind of fits into, into that realm. So, Jen, why don't you tell us a little bit about Gene Harlow and, and what we're going to be talking about today? Okay, that blind was amazing because it connected a lot of what we are going to get into. So, yes. Gene Harlow... She was the starlet of basically the 1930s, and she, her, she did have the stage mom of all times, and her mom will tell you that you know she wore the crown of Hollywood. She got her start with that billionaire, Howard Hughes. He put her in that first major appearance in Hell's Angels, and that's when she her, you know, her career really took off. That was 19, I think, 31, or was it 30? Because then yeah. she she changes in 32. Like she leaves Howard Hughes almost immediately and she yeah. goes with MGM. Right. And that's going to be big. That is big. And that movie Hell's Angels was in 1930. But and she had been, uh, you know, Fox executives. This is this is back in the day when you could just be walking around or at a drugstore counter. And she was visiting a movie lot with a friend. And um <laughs> She didn't want to become a star, and she even gave them a fake name, which was her mom's. So, <laughs> so at first, she, she didn't want to do it.